Hey everyone, Miss Abreu here. Let's finish out this part of the sample final. So here we have number or multiple answer number four, the distribution of scores for persons over 16 years of age on a common IQ test is approximately normal with a mean of, stand, a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So a bunch of buzzwords, right? I see approximately normal. I'm gonna keep that. I see my mean and I just see my standard deviation. And my variable here is this IQ score. Right, so this common IQ test gives this, this score. Okay, so let me go ahead and write this, that right now my variable is this score on an IQ test. It's numerical, right? It's, and they're telling me it's normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Okay, this first part says, what is the probability that a randomly chosen adult has an IQ score on this test over 105. Okay, well, let's figure that out. So I see that buzzword of probability, so capital P. I want some stuff in parentheses, if, and that stuff would be x greater than 105. Now, because this has a normal distribution, I can use normal CDF, so let me go with normal CDF, and this is gonna be low, and if you're not sure what it would actually be, let me, let me just draw a quick little picture here, right? Imagine you had 100 here, and you wanted to go 105, and let me change colors just so we can see it. If I wanted to go 105 or higher, I'd shade to the right, right? And then my low would be 105 and my high would be infinity. So let me go ahead and put my low of 105, my high of one or infinity, which we'll do with positive 199. My mean was 100 and my standard deviation was 15. And let me figure out which of these four numbers it is, um, and then I'm gonna rule this answer out because the population was stated to be normal. All right, now I'm gonna use my app because it's pretty similar to the calculator, um, the physical calculator at this point. So I'm gonna hit um, second bars, do normal CDF, and we're gonna go 105, 1, E, 9, 9, and then we've got 115. And when I crunch that, it looks like it's about 37%. So let me head back over there and we will put 0.37, or really 0 0.369, and there it is, okay? All right, this says, what is the probability of the average IQ score on this test of an SRS of 60 people is 105 or higher? Okay, so the some buzzwords floating through here. I do still see probability, but the big one is average, right? And then I see that I have a sample. So as soon as I have a sample, and I'm, got a numerical variable, I'm going to be on a sampling distribution. So X bar now is going to be the average score on the IQ test from this sample of 60 people. So average score on IQ test for sample of 60 people. Okay, now X bar, it's also gonna have a normal distribution. The reason I can automatically put that there, well, I could do it for a couple of reasons, but the population was normal, so the sampling distribution's automatically normal. And even if this N wasn't here, since the sample size is 60 or higher, I'm gonna be good either way. So let me undo some of my highlighting. All right, so I'm gonna have the same mean of 100, but my standard deviation becomes this standard error. I'm gonna do 15 divided by the square root of 60, and whatever that number is equal to, that's the one I'm gonna be rolling with. So when I look at these problems, things I do wanna point out, let me, let me change highlighter colors. Let's go to red. So I think one of the things is, you, you notice here, oh, you know what, red is not that different. Let's go to yellow. One of the things I notice here is this says a randomly chosen adult, where this says the average of 60 adults. So those are phrases that help me realize this pop problem is dealing with a population distribution, right? And this one down here, B, is dealing with a sampling distribution because quite frankly, it has a sample in it, right? It has a sample of 60 people. All right, so here I want the probability now that X bar is greater than 105. So I'm gonna go with normal CDF. Same thing, we're gonna go low, high, mean, and this time we're gonna put the standard error of 15 over the square root of 60, whatever that number is equal to. And then I'm gonna find out which of these four numbers it's equal to. 
And I'm going to rule this out because the sampling distribution is normal, right? It would be normal either way. Again, I, I want to reiterate, the population distribution was normal, so the sampling distribution is automatically normal. And even if it wasn't, even if this phrase right was not here, because my sample size was 60 or higher, I all automatically get this normal distribution here. All right, so let me head to my calculator. And again, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to use this app. And I'm just going to take this and make it 15 divided by the square root of 60. And let me move out of there, close that parentheses. And what is our probability this time? It looks like it's about 0 0.005. All right, so let me put that down here. This is 0 0.005. And I'm going to assume, yep, there it is. All right, great. So it says, would your method of answering A or B be affected if the distribution of IQ scores on this test in the adult population were distinctly non-normal? Explain which parts could be answered the same way, which could not, and how you know. Okay, so now we're gonna actually run through, let me erase this. We're gonna say, well, what if, what if this, let me see if I can actually just get rid of it. What if this was not here? Maybe I can't get rid of it. Maybe I have to do it with the pencil. Let me see. What if this was not stated, right? If we didn't know that, if we were just told the mean was 100 and the standard deviation was 15, well, let's start to take note. All right, if that was not there, that was all I'd have. I'd have to get rid of that capital N on the population distribution. And if this N isn't here, then I can't use normal CDF. So I could no longer do part A. Okay, now on the flip of it, for part B, because the sample size is 30 or higher, I still get this N here. All right, now if the sample, just as an FYI, let's say this sample was 29, then I couldn't say that the sampling distribution was normal. I'd be in some trouble, but the sample is not 29. It's 60, so I'm okay. So I could still do part B. And that's because of the central limit theorem. Right, which says anytime your sample is 30 or higher in mean land, you're going to know that your sampling distribution is approximately normal. So let's go through here and see which option this is looking for. So my method in part A would change in that I can no longer do the problem. That's correct. My method in part B would not change because the sample size is large enough for the CLT. To, yep, that's correct. So then this, oh, I'm using a different pen color. Let me switch back to purple. That's going to be the correct answer. All right, so if we look at the other options, it, this next one says my method in part A would not change. That's false. You can no longer do it. Um, my answers in part A, parts A and B would not change. That's false because A would change. Both methods would change in that I could no longer compute the probability. That's not true because B doesn't change. So there are your answers. So again, let me just kind of zoom out so we can see the work that we did on this problem. And there you go. All right.